So my wife made this amazing cherry crumble. But that's not what I brought you here for. What I want to talk about is Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. If any of you have seen uh, a 20,000 Leagues film, you've likely seen the Disney one from the 1950s. It's a classic. It was nominated for some Oscars. It was a big hit. And it was a big deal in the Jules Verne-verse. But it got some things wrong. And I'm going to talk about them. Fed his crew on worms and fishes, eels for breakfast. Slimy cold on seaweed dishes. When they ate it, they knew it wasn't beef. But eat they did with it's with a smelling like a reef. So I'll start by saying, I really like Jules Verne in general. I like every novel I've read of his. I've read three, I believe. <clears throat> and one of those that I read was 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Now, that novel is like four or five times the size of his others. 20,000 Leagues is like 300 pages. And the reason why it's 300 pages is the most fun part because he lists all the fish species he knows. That's right. Jules Verne knows his marine biology, and he wants you to know, as the reader, that he knows about all the fish names in Latin. That's right. So, for like a quarter of the book, he just lists fish species. Fortunately, Disney had the wisdom to cut that out. <clears throat> it is absolutely abhorrent to read. I think the only reason you might be interested is if you are interested exclusively in, like, 19th century marine biology. So Disney adapts this film, and I think overall, it's pretty good. It has some pretty good actors, it has pretty incredible set design, and, uh, especially for the 1950s, and it also has underwater shots. Like, they got everyone in scuba gear, not scuba gear, diving gear. Everyone's in diving gear, full diving gear, like with the, the metal frame around the head and like pack, pack full of oxygen. And they're walking around at the bottom of the ocean floor and they're filming it. And it's like, wow, this is crazy. There's several sequences of that, of um, the crew of the Nautilus, which is the ship in the movie, walking on the floor of the, of the sea, which is awesome. It's about a French scientist, uh, who's his, his trusty sidekick, and uh, a whaler um, who all are hunting down what they think is a monster. But they discover, eventually, that it isn't a monster. In fact, it is a man with a submarine. So they get on board the ship, and it's captained by a man named Captain Nemo. Here's the thing. Casting is the first slip up that they got. So the main characters in the book, French, right? He's a French professor at this museum in France. I can't remember the name of the museum. And his sidekick is his personal assistant slash, uh, like he's also like super into the, he's the one that lists all the fish, the fish species throughout the novel. And they just have a, a jolly good time of it. But they're both French, very French in fact. Um, and uh, they get two guys who struggle to have that French accent, mostly because the guy who plays the professor is from Hungary, and the guy who plays the sidekick is American, just happens to have Austrian heritage. So he's Austrian-American is what IMDb says. So there's a struggle going on there. Um, you can tell that, especially the professor actor, is struggling with the accent that he's trying to do. Everyone else is doing a great job, especially the guy who plays Captain Nemo. Would you like to join them? Indeed, yes. I, I would like to meet these wonders face to face. Very well. I'll introduce them to you. Everything I have issue with, basically, with this film is the background actors. 
Um, <clears throat> the background actors are all, you know, Anglo-Saxon. Um, and then on top of that, uh, like, they never talk, <laughs> and it's hilarious at times. And then, my only other issue with the original Disney movie is that they they kind of changed the ending a little bit. Um, I won't say how, but they changed the ending in a way that makes some things more definitive, and I didn't like that. The book leaves things open-ended. And I think in general this is what happens with a lot of like 18, 1800s or 19th century books that I've seen adapted into films. Same thing happened with like Frankenstein, same thing happened with... Dracula, um, same thing happened with the other Jules Verne's novels. Oftentimes I think just the general way that storytelling was done in the 19th century was kind of to leave people hanging right at the end. To leave everyone believing that this thing or these people or this mystery could still be out there, ready to, waiting to be solved. But in uh, classic Hollywood, that's not the case. Uh, so yeah, that's the Disney one, and I'd say watch it. I think um, it's a little slow at times. Its pacing is very much like a, a product of the 50s. It's, it's a film that's very much a product of the 50s in general. So its pacing is slower than what we experience today. Uh, and it's, but, but I think it's really good. The Black Hole, on the other hand. is insane. So Star Wars Episode Four had just come out, right? And Disney was like, we're gonna get in on this action because no one was expecting sci-fi to be this big. Up until this point, there had been some sci-fi hits, and some big ones like Planet of the Apes uh, or 2001 A Space Odyssey. And they had been really big among the science fiction crowd, but they weren't m super accepted among general audiences. So Disney, being the kind of business that they've always been, never really did anything with science fiction. They weren't really interested in catering to a subset. They wanted to reach the broad audience. Suddenly Star Wars comes around and blows everyone out of the water. It's the first major blockbuster. It out, I think it as what like I think its initial release is marks like the the biggest box office profit uh, in history up to that point. So Disney's like, what have we got on the table that we can use? So in Star Wars Episode Four, there's a there's a, s a segment of the film, probably about a third of the film, a quarter to a third of the movie takes place on the Death Star, right? So now take that idea and make that the movie. So there's no build up to the Death Star. There's no after the Death Star. There's just the Death Star. It would be boring if it was just the Death Star, which is exactly what this movie is. Except it's just the Death Star with fewer characters and more annoying robots. <laughs> One of them has a Southern accent. He sounds like Mater from Cars. Like, what? what? I think what was going on is that they probably had a script or an idea that was aping off of a bit more of the 2001 type of science fiction film. Very contemplative, very philosophical, and I think if that film had come out before Star Wars, it may have been okay. But then Star Wars came out, and C-3PO and R2-D2 were fun little kitty characters that, you know, the kids loved. And Disney thought, well, we got to make it for the kids, too. And so they threw in some really annoying robots. And... But they kept everything else. So like a zombie subplot with, like... And some other things. I don't want to spoil too much. Actually, you know what? I don't care. I don't care about spoiling this movie. So spoilers for The Black Hole. Because it is... 
strange and not worth your time unless you're really just interested in, in examining something that isn't worth your time. So, and this is, and it's kind of loosely based on, it, it is loosely based on 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea though. So you have basically Captain Nemo in space, just minus the 20,000 Leagues, because the spaceship just stays in one location the whole time, and everyone's on the spaceship the whole time. I don't know. So, anyway, I highly recommend checking out uh, Disney's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, if you haven't seen it. Um, read the book. Definitely read the book. Especially if you like adventure stories. Like, I think it's really good. I think what ends up happening a lot of times is we get so uh, fixated on, on the visualization of stories that we forget that sometimes the book's better. <laughs> and this is the case. The book is better. Um, well, sort of. In the sense that, like, definitely cut out like, the quarter where the guy's just listing fish names. Um, but everything else is great. And, uh... Yeah. So read the book, check out the original Disney movie, and never watch The Black Hole. That's all I have to say. And with that, you can, you can count on me to be uh, a person. I'm going to get back to eating my uh, cherry cobbler and uh, you guys can get back to doing whatever you were doing before you started watching this video.